In this video, let's see the differentiation of the next inverse trigonometric function. The next inverse trigonometric function into picture is cosecant inverse x. Now, cosecant inverse x has the differentiation with respect to x and the formula is equal to minus 1 upon mod x under root x square minus 1. Just like what we did for secant inverse x, we are going to do for cosecant inverse x. So, before watching this video, I request you to please watch at least the inverse trigonometric function secant inverse x differentiation video. So, I give the heading as proof. We'll be going by this video very quickly since it is almost similar to the previous video. I'm going to assume y is equal to cosecant inverse x cosecant inverse x is equal to y or I can say that x is equal to cosecant y. That means you are going to take cosecant both sides. Now, let's name this 1, let's name this 2. And what we are going to do again as we did, we are going to differentiate. So, I write differentiating, differentiating with respect to x. Differentiating with respect to x give me 1 here, cosecant becomes minus cosecant y, cot y because you know cosecant theta's differentiation is minus cosecant theta cot theta. y becomes dy by dx. Now dy by dx, let's keep it separate, let's keep it to the other side. It becomes equal to minus 1 upon cosecant y cot y. Now, Let's place this in a box. We'll be needing it for future reference. And now cosecant y cot y can be written something like this. This is uh, not being explained in detail because this we have already done in our previous video. This is the product of absolute terms. Now what about the range and domain part? I know x belongs to real minus excluding minus 1 to 1. That means you have to take everything on the real number line except the minus 1 and 1 themselves and the interval between them. Rest all is fine. Rest all is fine. You can take x less than minus 1. You can take x uh, greater than 1. So these two are fine taking x greater than 1 and less than minus 1. But what all should be in consideration that you are not allowed to take, you are barred from taking or you are hindered from taking the interval between minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 and 1 themselves. So now, see that if your x, if your x that you are taking into consideration is less than minus 1 and the other condition is your x can be greater than 1. So firstly, if I say my x is greater than 1, that means my cosecant y is greater than 1 and cosecant value is greater than 1 or it is positive in which quadrant? At least it is positive in the first quadrant that we know. So that is what I am going to say. If x is greater than 1, that means y will be where? Belonging to 0 to pi by 2. That means the first quadrant we are going to take into consideration. Now, if that happens, then obviously in this range or interval, 0 to pi by 2 extended range, I say that my cosecant y will be greater than 0. I say that my cot y will also be greater than 0 because in 0 to pi by 2, 0 to 90 degree angles, all cosecant and all are obviously positive. We are not taking the square brackets. We are not taking 0 degree or 90 degree, but between them, right? So first thing is clear. If this happens that these both are greater than 0, that means the absolute terms product will also be greater than 0. This is the thing. The another thing that we are going to take into consideration after taking x greater than 1 is x less than minus 1. If x is less than minus 1, if x is less than minus 1, what about cosecant y? That means the value of cosecant y is also less than minus 1. So that means what can be the y's interval in which it lies? It can be minus pi by 2 to 0, right? Because I say that if I have a circular motion, suppose, and I say that I am going such that this is my 0 degree, this is my 90 degree. All the values lying between 0 and 90 degree are fetching me positive values, positive values of cosecant. But when it is minus pi by 2 to 0, that means you will also have minus pi by 4, minus pi by 6, minus pi by 3. Everywhere cosecant will be negative, right? Suppose I say what is cosecant minus pi by 4? 
so it is what it is 1 upon minus sin pi by 4 so it is minus 1 by what minus 1 by sin pi by 4 and if this is the case you can always compute the answer that means it is nothing but minus 1 by 1 by under root 2 so it is minus under root 2 which is negative so any value you take in minus pi by 2 to 0 will give me the cosecant value as negative right so cosecant y cot y both will be negative and then again their absolute terms product has to be what has to be that we have to see so cosecant y cot y they'll be expanded as minus cosecant y as in the previous video minus cot y minus minus becoming plus so it becomes greater than zero again so both the cases you have greater than zero that means you can manipulate manipulate what cosecant y remains as it is cot y becomes under root cot square y this can be written like this now what is the formula of cosecant square theta and cot square theta cosecant square theta minus cot square theta is equal to 1 that means cot square theta is equal to cosecant square theta minus 1 so it is equal to minus 1 by cosecant y under root cosecant square y minus 1 right now what all substitutions again you can do wherever you have cosecant y cosecant y can be substituted as x right and everything is dy by dx so even one more substitution is allowed that y can be computed as cosecant inverse x so from 1 and 2 in one step only i am doing from 1 and 2 it is d by dx of y which is cosecant inverse x equal to minus 1 upon cosecant y mod of cosecant y is mod of x multiplied by under root cosecant square y minus 1 cosecant square y minus 1 is under root x square minus 1 so basically let's enclose this in a big box this is the formula of the differentiation of cosecant inverse x with respect to x